So the main components of the ram pump are two valves. This is the inlet for the water and this is the outlet. This valve up here is a flap valve, a flap non-return valve, which is normally open. And as you can see, there is a little flap here, which you can hear moving at the moment. Maybe the camera can pick it up. Um, and then in here, this is a spring non-return valve. So it's just a plate with a spring in it. Um, that valve is normally closed and this valve is normally open. So what happens is the water feeds in through here. So the water will be coming from river, upstream, um, coming from a pond or maybe even um, a, a spring um, at a higher level. It comes down here and starts to flow out through the flap valve. And as it gains momentum, it catches the flap, pulls it up and slams it shut. So when it slams that flap valve shut, the water in here comes to a stop. So that causes the pressure to rise. When the pressure rises, it pushes against the plate here, against the spring, opens the plate, opens the valve, and allows a small quanta or plug of water into the discharge line, which goes up to your tanks. Um, as that happens, the pressure then inside in here starts to drop. And because it's dropping, this starts to close, this valve closes, and this one then starts to open again. And the cycle repeats itself. The water then pours out through here, catches the valve, the flap on it, and the valve closes it again. Pressure builds up, opens this valve, a small plug of water goes through, pressure starts to drop, this closes and this opens, and the cycle begins again. A couple of other details about the pump is, generally speaking, your inlet pipe is one size bigger than your outlet pipe. There are a couple of reasons for that. The main reason is that in order to drive the pump, we have to use about um, 88 to 90 percent of the water coming down from here to drive the pump, which means it comes out through the, the flat on the turn valve. The other 10 to 12 percent of water goes through the discharge line and up into the tanks. So while these pumps are very efficient in terms of energy, um, and it's all free obviously, um, they're not as efficient volumetrically. But again, it's not an issue because the water that comes out through here just drains back to the river or the stream. So you're just borrowing that for, to operate the pump. With this demo pump at the moment, we can actually build pressure, static pressure on this side up to 100 psi which will take water over long distances and take it to a height of, at the moment we're pumping out to 50 foot outside from what, four foot high? Yeah, yeah. four so foot high. Four, hey, four foot. Four foot head on this side. Feeling it. Yeah, and, and then, then we're pumping 50. to 50 feet on the training tower yes. here at First Nation. In the flow in the stream, it has to be secured to something solid to retain the hammer action. You have to actually put it to a cement block or something solid. It can also be submerged up to 12 inches. You can extend this here, 12 inches, to come out over the top of the water. Maintenance involved is basically these flap valves, which are very, very, very cheap to buy. Flap valves, you have to keep them clean, you have to make sure they're clean, right? Just to flatten. Spring non return, sometimes gets a bit of dirt, disconnect it, clean it, and that's it. Um, under Constant working conditions, these flat valves will last up to 12 months. There's a lot of other details then about the overall system. For instance, going back to the feed pipe um, feeding this, you should put in a rigid pipe um, for a couple of meters in advance of um, the pump. And that is to deal with the problems that you have with a flexible pipe in that water hammer, as what we've mentioned already, that will go back up the pipe and if it's flexible you'll lose some of the force and some of the effect and, and, and um, the efficiency of the pump. So using um, a rigid pipe for a couple of meters beforehand is advisable. It's not absolutely necessary um, but it does help. If you're putting this in a river and the feed pipe then can be left in the bottom of the river, all that's need, needed is just to place a few stones, a few rocks on the pipe back up along um, and it'll eventually get sedimented over 